Hello, welcome to Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my summer bedding on my balcony here. As you can see it's looking quite nice at the moment. It's currently about middle of July, just before the middle of July, about the, the 12th or something like that. And I'd just like to give you guys a, a look at how things are doing on my balcony. Starting off here, I've got my um, Venus Lightwrap. It's just finished flowering so hopefully I can harvest the seeds soon. You can see some of them are just starting to come through there. So it looks like they're starting to open up. So I need to harvest the seed before it drops. And let's see if I can sow that. The plant itself isn't doing too well, but hopefully once the seeds have finished setting, it will recover slightly. Got my tree peonies here. They did okay this year. They put on a lot of new growth. Haven't put any, any stems yet. Stems are still very short. You can see down there. They've got on plenty of leaves. So they're doing quite well. Coming across to my two planters here. I planted them both up with petunias. There's a nice purple one here. It's Quite a lot the flowers are quite a bit smaller than they are on the red one but then there's, there's more there's more of them so they still give a great display and they've also got quite a nice scent as well they're quite i really like the kind of dark purple color with the um the veining in there as well now in real life they're a bit more purple on the ca on, on the camera they come across a bit more blue but they're more of a purple color um than the blue that there is on the uh, on the picture at the moment so going along here's the uh, the red ones the red ones, um, they don't really have much of a smell, but they're doing quite well also. They're not quite as uh, many flowers, but they're doing pretty well. But I'll have to make sure though, as these kind of start falling over and trailing, is I'm going to have to have some kind of support, because what happens most years is it falls over like that and lands on the floor. It gets kind of the top heavy, and the troughs aren't heavy enough to hold them up. So I'm going to have to look at some kind of weight or something to hold them back. But I keep them well watered for now until that stage comes to make sure they don't fall over. But I've been very lucky this year. We've had unusually hot, dry weather. And that's really helped a lot with the, uh, the flowers. Because at this stage in the summer, they're not normally this big. They're normally about this size towards the end of August. So it's, it's going to get really big this year, I think. And coming along, I've got my um, dahlia here. This one's done particularly well. This one was under the grow lamps for, for about a month or two. That seemed to really help it out, give it a good head start and it's growing quite well at the moment not sure when i'm going to get the first flowers but they're always quite late in dahlias in scotland so it's probably going to be august september time and i have got my other one over here this is the one actually that was from a more expensive shop um that one back there was actually from a cheap discount shop and that one's done a lot better this one did get quite leggy it wasn't under grow lamps it was just on a north facing windowsill got quite leggy it's flopped over but it's put on some new growth now that new growth is certainly a lot stockier but it still doesn't seem to be 100%. Some of the lower leaves have died off. It seems to wilt slightly in the hot, sunny weather. So I'm thinking there might be some um, vine weevil in here, because I have seen a few vine weevils on the balcony, so there's a chance that the vine weevil larvae are eating the roots off. So I'm not expecting this to come to much, and I might replace it, because it's a big pot, and it's a handy pot to have. So if it doesn't do much later on, I'll put another plant in that large pot, and that's the prime position, really. So coming along, I've got some planters hanging on the side here. They're doing quite well. These are the cuttings that I took of my geraniums. I had originally thought this one was going to die because it was it had got quite loose, but it's come back quite well now. All the other cuttings have survived. This is the original mother plant here, the geranium. You can kind of see if I move the leaves. There's quite a lot of the old stems there, quite thick, quite a lot of branches. Whereas these other ones are gen to be tend to be one or two stems, and they're much younger plants. I'll give you a shot of it under there. Same with these, but this is actually a new compost on the right hand side, the left compost. This side is old compost because it had the original plant in. I didn't change the compost. You can really see the difference. There's some signs of nutrient deficiency on these leaves, kind of yellowing at the edges. Um, some of them are even dying off a bit more. These don't look too healthy. Whereas the ones in the new compost are much bigger. The flowers are larger as well. The, f the leaves are much healthier. It's generally doing much better. So next year, even if I keep this original mother plant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out, refresh the compost, give it some decent compost, and that will really help it along. In the end here, I didn't have um, enough cuttings because one of them actually fell out. We had a bad storm and that got damaged. So I put in a trailing fuchsia here. What I'll have to do is I'll have to move my dahlia and also my um, bonsai larch tree here because what's happening now is it's trailing over a bit and you can't quite see it. And you can see even right behind the the larch here is trailing down nicely. It's got some really beautiful flowers. They start off quite like a dark purple, as you can see that one on the right, and then they fade to more of a pinky purple. And they, they're looking really good at the moment. Loads and loads of flowers that are coming on it. Has got quite a few aphids, but um, the aphids haven't been a big issue yet. 
and as you can see they're, they're starting to flower really nicely so that should do quite well my other fuchsia is down here my giant one this had loads of big flowers on it a few weeks ago i cut a lot of them off though because um, they were just going over and i didn't want it to set seed you can see some of the the stems there's a stem there there's a stem there as well they used to be you can see a couple more stems here but there's still some nice big ones this is just starting to open this one's just going over and some kind of, kind of in between but it's doing quite well it hasn't put a lot of growth on this year but i think you put on so many flowers and the flowers are so big takes up a lot of the energy from the plant i think that's the reason why it hasn't really put in any gro growth on its stems or its uh, or its leaves but it's doing quite well anyway decent display i'll try and give you guys an update on this when it gets the, the floss of flowers at the moment it's kind of in between flosses you can see these ones are kind of finishing but it's got some new growth here with some new buds coming through so it's going to have another floss, floss of flowers in not too distant future so i'll give you guys an update when that happens i'm quite happy with how that's doing at the moment Continuing down here on the left, I've got my Arthur Bell Floribunda Rose. This has been flowering quite nicely. It's had several flowers already. You can see I've already cut one off from this position, cut one off from back here as well. So I've got this old one here, another fairly old flower there. These need deadheading soon. What tends to happen with this variety of rose is they actually start off very, very dark yellow, such as these buds here. And they even have a slight red tinge to some of the petals. You can just about see that on the tips of those ones start off nice dark yellow and i'll show you a picture now of when this rose here was actually younger and you'll see the nice shape it had in the nice dark yellow color they then fade to this pale kind of yellow color here later on they go almost pure white like these very oldest ones and when they're pure white you know that's when it's time to deadhead and they also open up a lot wider and you can see more inside them i've also got an interesting uh, white spider which is nice to to camouflage itself on this uh on this white rose there as well so here's my tom thumb fuchsia this has done really well it had actually been killed right back to the ground because of the frost but uh, it's recovered nicely you can probably see lower down where the cut marks were and i had a previous video i'll put that in the in, 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 in a link for you so you can see how that has grown since um since spring it hasn't really started flowering yet but it's got loads of buds just about to flower soon um, so i'm expecting it to look really good in the near future i'm quite happy with how it's responded it has had a lot of aphids you can see some of kind of the uh, sticky on the uh, on the leaves that's from the aphids and it's been a bit damaged by the aphids but there's quite a lot of beneficial insects around at the moment so i'm expecting that to recover nicely it's generally doing really well it's a very small dwarf fuchsia um shouldn't get too much bigger than this and the flowers that's about as large as they get they will open soon um see if i got any open at the moment but as i say it's only just started there's one here which is just opening up you can see there kind of the purple inside that will open up a bit more but it does look really good and this does have loads and loads of flower it does really well for me the fuchsia so i'm expecting it to do well it'll also start to bend over no it did last year at least so it'll be interesting to see if that flops over or not and uh, starts training a bit like it did last year Coming down here, I've got my Sinetti, looking very poorly at the moment. It's got a lot of leaf mine now. It's just kind of, it's just kind of exhausted itself with all the flowering. It needs a bit of deadheading. But uh, what I'll do is I'll cut this back hard soon. That'll encourage a new flush. And by the end of autumn, we should have another display. There should be a lot of new growth lower down. That will hopefully come back nice and fresh. So coming along to the front of my balcony, I've got an Agaranthemum here which is doing nicely just kind of hooked on to one of these hook on pots turn it around though so you can see it because the best of the flowers tend to grow towards the sunlight you can see there really really loads loads of loads of flowers these ones start off as well really dark in color um, so you can see these younger ones here just starting to open and they kind of go to this dark color such as that they then slowly get larger and they fade to a quite a pale pink and also the, the, the center kind of opens up and gets a slightly different texture but this has got loads of flowers i suspect this will flower nearly all summer as well it should do really well there's a lot of uh, fresh growth coming from lower down so i think the bottom will bush up later on uh, i've just been regularly deadheading it and there's loads of new buds coming loads of new growth so I'm expecting this to continue and give a good display all summer moving on to my main planters at the front here these were actually planted very late i'll put a link into the video that i planted these up the other plants were planted uh, at the right time these were quite late because i was too busy and the um the the, the violas that were already in here were doing particularly well so i actually left them to grow for a little while 
So these were planted quite a bit later in the winter, why they're a bit further behind than they should be. And the other reason is we had a really bad storm. We had winds over 60 miles an hour in June, which was very unusual, even for Scotland. We get strong winds in winter, but not normally in summer. So what I did is I actually cut them really short so that the wind wouldn't damage them as much. This one, strangely enough, hasn't really recovered after I cut it short. It stayed really small. But the other ones, you can see, they've all grown much taller now. They're all looking really good. Um, they're just starting to come into flower. So they put on a lot of leaf after I cut them back, but they're now starting to flower up. You can see they've got a really nice flowering display. These are bedding chrysanthemums. Um, they're not like the other chrysanthemums where they only flower in autumn. These flower from now until November, or at least that's what the label says. Um, I'm not expecting it to flower in November in Scotland, but I'll certainly get October out of it. At the front here is my, uh, my lobelia. The idea is these will trail over the front come late summer. These were cut short as well. You can probably see there's a kind of cut stems just there. So they were cut really low. So these have been set back a bit, but they've got really strong, healthy growth at the moment. And they're just starting to come into flower as well. You can see they're not covered in flowers yet because it's quite early on. They only just started to grow again after they've been cut. But these will be completely blue by the end of summer and they'll be trailing right down. And you'll see quite nicely. Um, hopefully it'll trail right over as long as we keep this good weather up. You can kind of see from the grass below how dry it's been. The grass in Scotland never normally goes brown, it suffers from drought. But we've not really had any rain for two weeks. It's been sunny and warm almost every day. So that's really helped the plants out. Even these ones that were cut back hard to put on some good strong growth because the weather's been so nice and warm and sunny. So coming up here, I've got my um, drain pipe planters. This Nemesia, I actually just deadheaded recently and it's one from last year in old compost. So it's not doing as well as the other plants, but it's still got a few flowers on and it should have a second floss in a few weeks time and this is the Wisley vanilla variety so this has a really amazing smell it smells quite similar to vanilla so that's a really good one to have when the balcony door is open you can smell it coming into the flat coming down is one of my geraniums that i've survived from last year so this is an old compost again but this one's done really well you can see it's absolutely covered in flowers this one will probably dead heading soon on the right you can see it's just going over but there's a new one coming there there's plenty more coming as well and the great thing about the geraniums and as i say i've got my other geraniums around this side as well. You know, the geraniums keep flowering well into October. They really do flower quite late here in Scotland. Even if the summer starts to cool off and the other plants start to suffer, the geraniums seem to keep going and they can take us a light frost, which is really handy. Whereas most of the bedding plants will be killed off by a light frost. The geraniums will keep growing and they just keep producing amazing bright red flowers. So coming down on the on the planter, I've got another Numesia here. This one's a different variety, it doesn't have the, a really amazing smell. It still has a scent, but it's not the vanilla smell of the Wisley vanilla variety. But it's looking really, really good at the moment. This is probably the best flowering plant I've put, I think I've got on the balcony. Absolutely covered in flowers. I've deadheaded it a few times, but every time I deadhead it, it just sends up new shoots. And you can see there's lots more coming up. It keeps back budding with new flower shoots. And it's always been, it's been covered in flowers pretty much since from when I planted it. So it's that, that's my favorite so far. I think I'll definitely be growing more of these next year. They're doing really well. And it's just, just so covered in flowers. You can almost see no leaves. Whereas a lot of the other plants like the geraniums, they do have lovely big flowers, but there's also a lot of leaf. Whereas this is just pure color, which is what I like. It's the same with the lobelia. When these get, come on to late summer, these are so covered in flowers. There's no green leaves. It's just pure blue. It looks really nice. Further down, I've got a trailing geranium. My cuttings unfortunately didn't take. I took them in the middle of winter. Plant was really already stressed, so they died. And the original plants also died because the winter was a bit too hard for them. I left them outside for a bit too long. But you can see this one's got loads and loads of flower buds coming. It's not really been flowering much yet. This is the first flower it's had. It's got another one just, just opening over there. And it's also got that flower just about to open. But you can see it's got loads of buds, loads and loads of flowers bikes coming so that should flower nicely and this is a training variety so what will probably happen is some of these stems they'll get a bit longer a bit leggier they'll flop down like this and that will kind of fill that nice bottom area quite nicely and finally a bit tucked out of the way can't really see it from inside the balcony but you can see it from the front is a is a bedding osteospernum and bedding osteospernums normally do really well for me this one's just kind of in between uh, a flush of flowers at the moment so it's only got a few that are open and they're also a bit old you can see they're kind of fading it is normally quite a lovely dark color to the flowers and you get a nice yellow in this in the middle where all the pollen is and there's a little bit of yellow this one seems to be a bit younger um, so that one's doing a bit better that one looks quite nice uh, but you can see the several points where i've cut it off in the past but it's got a new flush coming you can see lots of buds 
coming on this healthy bit of growth here. There's also lots of flower buds coming up here. So this will probably grow quite well. It always does do well on my balcony, the osteosperms. Um, and this will be covered in flowers probably in just a couple of weeks. So I think that's about it for all the plants in the balcony. I've got a few more down here. These tend to be plants that have bad aphid infestations. What I do is I put them out on the balcony. The benefits of ins insects come along and they normally deal with the aphids. So these are kind of like the, the rescue area for the plants. If we do have some more colder weather, I'll have to bring them back indoors. But generally it's been warm enough at the moment. So there's not, um, there's not too much of an issue to have them outside. I think that's it for my update on my balcony. Um, I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks time. Hopefully the, uh, these, all these flowers have grown a lot more, grown a lot bigger. Um, and I'll try and keep these from falling down. Things that I'm most excited about seeing will be my dahlias when they finally open. They should be some really big flowered dahlias. I went for the slightly larger varieties. This one, as I say, I'm not sure how well it's going to do. And I'm also looking forward to my uh, bedding chrysanthemums growing right up because these should be about two or three foot tall. They say they can grow quite tall. And also the lobelia, they should hopefully trail right over the edge and cover the um, the pots completely. You can't see them from the inside when they trail down, but it looks really nice from the outside of the balcony. So that's all from this update, and as I say, I'll give you guys an, uh, another update in a few weeks' time.